Hello, welcome back to part two of the introduction or the history of BS76M1. In the first part that's I covered where the regs came from and why it came along. In the second part, this I'm going to cover the remainder of what I've got here, which is basically just a little bit of history of how the regulations have developed in recent years. I chucked these together when I was teaching to get a flow to a lesson and start getting people to think about it. So there may be some errors in here. Um, I'm not that fucking bothered, to be honest. It's just like to get you into it. These are legacy things that it doesn't matter if there's errors in them anyway. So if some of them are wrong, please feel free to let me know, but I'm probably not going to change it because it's just like, it's just to get a feel of how we're moving on, where we're going, and how the regs are developing all the time. So if you can go back to the, the 17th edition, like I'm doing here, the finer, finer, final major changes in 2016 to that regs were that regulation there that within domestic households, Consumer units and similar switch gear should comply with BSEN 61439-3 and shall have their enclosures manufactured from non-combustible material or be enclosed in the cabinet or enclosure constructed of non-combustible material and comply with regulation 1312. Um, people often say that all fuse boards in the domestic environment have to be metal. That is not true. The regs don't say that. The regs say, or the regs did say, they might change now, check that. You can check it though. Be my guest. Tell me I'm wrong. You can use plastic fuse boards if they're, if they're plastic that doesn't burn or self-extinguishing. It says there quite clearly, manufactured from a non-combustible material. Well, I'll tell you now, there are a couple of types of wood in the world that are non-combustible. So in theory, they could be made out of them. It'd be a very expensive fuse board, but they could be. So that was where I feel that the regs, after getting a bit shit and products getting a bit shit, started to improve. For example, I do honestly believe that the death of plastic fuse boards... Yeah, because they did die because this red come in and the return to metal actually increased the quality of fuse boards dramatically. All right, they're hard to work. We've got to drill more holes in them, but I believe, honestly, it improved the quality of fuse boards dramatically. And the ones that are available today, the budget ones, are just as good, to be honest, as some of the decent competitors. So that was the last major change. It was 17th. Um, big change at the time. I remember it well. A lot of people were moaning. Fuse box will go through the fucking roof. Everything will be expensive. And it turned out it didn't fucking matter that much because people love moaning about shit. People don't like change. But the regs are there to push this change. And I think that was a great change for the better. Certainly cut down on the amount of fuse boards melting under staircases, which is great. Uh, unless you live in a new build because they're all shit. But it was a good change and I was pleased to see it come in. And I, like I say, years later now, seven, eight years later... I could tell you that that has actually improved the quality of fuse boards and the equipment in our says my dog's barking again. So 18th edition came along. The major change in the 18th edition. I was out of the game with the 18th edition. I got back into it when I was training. So I, I, I looked at these things going off, but I didn't have a copy of the regs book for some considerable time because it wasn't relevant to me what I was doing. I was working as a controls engineer, which I'm going to go and work as now, in fact. But things came along for people to moan about again. So we had the recommendation for installation of arc fault detection devices. Because it, it was a recommendation in the 18th edition, they've only just started getting popular now. This is May 2022. And they've only just started coming down in price now in May 2022 because everyone pretty much ignored that regulation. Just didn't fucking bother. But what the regs do is they slowly ease things in. They can't just go bang. Everyone's got to do um, AFDDs because it's not how the society, the industry, the industry works. That was sort of like a, hey lads and ladies, get used to it, these things are coming. Anyone that remembers as far back as I can will remember this is how um, RCDs got gently guided into the regulations. And what AFDDs are doing now, I've seen it all before because I've watched RCDs coming through. With the requirement for metal cable supports and exit routes brought in, again, this improved the trade and made the trade better and made us better, more competent sparkers just by changing regulation. It meant you couldn't throw cables across ceiling tiles, which no decent sparky would do. They would always support their cables, but you used to go up into a ceiling and you still do it now and it's just fucking full of cables all over the top. And the problem was, firefighters were going to rescue people in buildings, going in, these ceilings were collapsing and then covering them with basically a net of cabling and I think a couple of firefighters actually died which is why that reg came in. They always say regulations are written in blood, and it turns out it is usually true. So, that stopped shit-ass bastard wank electricians lobbing bits of cable across ceilings with bows and arrows, which I think, again, was good for the trade. The requirement for our steam protection and most sockets came in, almost nipping up 20 years of work in the importation of RCDs to the regulations, which I have watched in its entirety. Shut the fuck up, dog! 
Metallic pipes entering a building with an insulating section at the point of entry. No, no longer need to be connected to the protective equipment bonding. So you didn't have to bond water if the water came in in plastic. At the time, I found this hard to stomach because I'd been brought up in the 16th edition. I was all about earthing, earthing, earthing. And I think I carried on connecting things to, to water, even though there's this plastic section. Uh, I don't now because I've got used to the fact it's coming in. So obviously nowadays, a lot of new builds won't need earth bonding to the water because it comes in in plastic. Not gas because we haven't quite dared to tread into the depths yet of plumbers using plastic pipe within houses. I suspect that in a few years time, they will get a little device that will screw into the gas that comes into the building, which will be a flash rester to stop fire going back down. And what they'll do is they'll accept that the gas pipe can burn, the little bit of gas in it can burn off and it won't go back onto the system. I expect to see in the next 10 years, plastic pipe work for gas in houses. You heard it here first kids. But yeah, but at the minute, your gas still needs to be bonded. There was various content relating to energy efficiency which is happening, they push that in. Devices for isolation, switching onshore units, and all this other bollocks that was in there. But it was a good edition, the 18th edition. There's a lot of major changes made. The 16th edition was a long edition. I said that before. The 17th edition seemed to pass me by in the night. It didn't seem to last for very long. The 18th edition has already been for a major amendment for EV charging, Amendment 1, and now it's had a pretty major Amendment 2. I expect we'll get a third one out of it before we move on to a 19th edition, Get used to this, chaps and chapesses. The 16th edition was long. It was around for a while because nothing changed technology-wise. When I first started in, in our service, we used to fit lights and sockets and a heater. And the only bit of electronics in a house was a fan over on timer. Everything was passive. Now, lots of things are active. Smart sockets, uh, intelligent smoke alarms with wireless connections, washing machines that you can control off an app. Uh, USB sockets with remote control, it's car chargers, this stuff's getting more complex and more complicated. So, to make this fit in with the regs, the regs have got to move quicker. The IT got caught with the pants down a few years ago where when the 18th come out, stuff moves so fast on what they call the unicorn device that the actual devices that EV charge manufacturers were issuing for use on site did not have any recognised compliance with the regulations we were having to be listed as a deviation. That led to the first time in that I can remember of the IT issuing an amendment without issuing a new book. The blue book is, amend is number one and with a printable thing it is number two. There was never a colour for amendment two. Might have been a bit of COVID but they got caught with the pants down because they couldn't keep up with the technology. And unfortunately now they've got to keep up with the technology because technology is moving so fast. LED lighting's come along, AFDDs have come along, EV charging, batteries, smart grids, prosumer section, it's all flying, so I expect these regs and rules to change quicker than they have before. It used to be out every three years, but I can see that coming down, so get used to buying books, hence why there's a pound signs there. Amendment 1, this is something I used to give before it came out. Sorry, it isn't, this is Amendment 1. It applied to um, a change for EV charging, as I put there. Please feel free to download the old Amendment 1 if you want to have a look at that, but it was just a change to EV charging, but we don't need to worry about that next one, Amendment 2 which is not covered in there. So, thanks for watching that, if you were interested in that. The next video is going to be about parts of the regulations and why they are important. And I hope now you're getting for a feel for how the book is constructed, how the regs are formed, how they are read. So, before diving into the parts, it's worth having a flick through the book, start to read it, start to look through it. Don't just watch all these videos in a wanna, or maybe do, but use the book. You're here to use the book with this course, not just sit there watching this open your past the exam which you won't using the book is what you do in the exam we are training to use the book we are learning about using the book so take a break now and use the book have a flick around it see how you find a way around it then i'll tell you how it's built no problem see you later assholes